Hello, my name is Westbam and welcome to another very exciting VVV tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to continue my lesson from the previous tutorial. I have set up this patch over here and if you want to know how to make it, watch my previous tutorial because this just saves time. It's some random spreads connected to a transform that will play some random placed quads on the renderer. And in this tutorial I'm going to show you how we can color each corner of quads with a different color. So we got four corners, so we need four colors. So first let's do that. We make an IO box color, one green, and let's do it again. Double right click, pick color. And if you right click and drag, you can change the color. So I'm gonna make this orange. And now I got four colors to color my four corners. Okay, let's start with the first corner, this one over here. We need to figure out for this corner if the position for the x-axis is smaller than 1 and if the position for the y-axis is bigger than 1. And the word and is our magic word for today. So just as in the previous tutorial, I'm going to make the smaller than sign and I'm going to connect the random spread to it. This will output me a 1 if the quads are on the left side of the screen or a negative translate x. And I'm going to make another node, the bigger than node, bigger than value. And I'm going to connect the translate Y to it. So only the quads that are end to the left, end to the top, are going to be colored. And to do that, we're going to create the end node, end boolean. Now, if I look at the help file, if both are zero, the output is zero. If one of them is zero, the output is zero. But if they're both 1, so this is 1 and this is 1, then we output a 1. Okay, let's close the help file again and connect our smaller than and bigger than node. And just as in the previous tutorial, I'm going to color this using a switch. So I double left click and I type switch and I'm going to choose the switch color input. I'm going to connect my end node and now I can connect my two colors. So I want to use this color. And I want to use this color. And if we now go to the quad, you will see that one corner of the renderer is colored purple. Now you also see some blue quads in here. And you see some purple quads in here. But that's just because the spread counts are not yet corrected. But I'm going to do that later. So for now let's continue to the next corner. And in this corner, the translate x is positive And the translate i is also positive. And since I'm lazy and this is VVV, I'm going to reuse these two nodes. I'm not going to create any more bigger than or smaller than nodes. Because I already got the outcome here and it says it's zero if it's on this side. So I need to find a clever way to invert this zero into a one. And transforming zeros into ones, we can do that using the not boolean node. So I just connect the smaller than sign for the translate x to the not. And since the Y location is the same as the purple quads, I can reuse this bigger than sign. Okay, I need another end node and boolean. And I'm going to connect this again. And as you might have noticed by now, I'm going to make a chain with all kinds of switches. So I need another switch color input. And I'm going to connect it to the end node. Now, for the input 1, I'm going to use the color spread generated by this switch. And for input 2, I'm going to pick a new color. And if I now color my quads with this switch, I got one corner purple and one corner green. And now we can repeat the process for the next corner. Let's pick this corner over here. It's a, a translate x of negative 1 and a translate i of negative 1. So let's first uh, make an end node again and boolean and I can reuse this smaller than node because it's on the left side but because it's below the y-axis I need to invert this node so I'm gonna make another node not boolean connect it and here and let's make another switch and I'm feeling a bit lazy so I'm just gonna duplicate this one I select it hit ctrl D and it's duplicated we're going to use the end node to switch it. We're going to use the color spread from the previous switch for input 1. And we're going to pick our final color for input 2. 
And now we can connect the switch to the quad. And here you have a very messy patch coloring all four corners of our renderer. Okay, let's uh, quickly make our spread counts equal. And just as in previous tutorials, I'm going to count the transforms. So I'm going to make a node called count node. It says 610 and that's because the spread count of the scale X and scale Y are 610 slices. So let's resample, resample spreads. Let's resample the translate X random spread 610 times. And let's resample the translate I spread 610 times. And instead of using the random spread, I'm going to use the resample to feed the smaller than node. So input one resample. And, and as you saw, the old connection disappeared because there can only be one connection to one input pin. Now let's do the same for the bigger than sign. And uh, all my problems here are fixed. Okay, the cool part is if I change the zero to something else, I right click and drag. I can change my little color grid over here. So I have to do the same over here. Okay, well, you see how we can chain multiple booleans together. But uh, let's be honest, this method, it, it works, but uh, it's, it's not very recommended if you want to um, make multiple colored areas in your renderer. I mean, just imagine if we wanted to make a grid 9x9, we have to make 9 switches, 9 colors. Think very hard, I think we even need an equal sign or something. It's going to become very messy very, very quick. Yeah, if you're doing something like this, like copying a lot of nodes over and over again, you should really stop and, uh, and consider if there's a spreadable solution for this. And of course there is. There is a special note for this specific problem. And I'm going to use that node in our next tutorial. We're going to recreate this patch, but we're going to do it the easy and spreadable and the correct way. This was just a short intro to introduce some Boolean nodes and some Boolean logic. And I hope you learned something today. In the next tutorial, I hope to show you a bit more about the power of spreads. My name is Westbam and thank you for watching.